Hello and welcome to today's episode and in today's episode I'm going old school and doing a tutorial on the pros and cons of uh, owning uh, precious metals in form of paper and in form of physical so this is what I started the channel for I really wanted to educate like a lot of people think that I'm simply a gold or a silver bug because I was a dealer but that's not true I actually believe that the physical market has a lot of drawbacks. Market. So let's look at the pros, the cons. Separate them up. So, firstly, one of the pros of owning it is you can hide it. It's very hideable. You know, it's concealable. Is probably a better word for it. You can have it on the books, off the books. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. You know, that's for you to decide for yourself. But you could buy it and totally forget about it. You know, and people often say to me, oh, what about CGT coins? And my response is, well, realistically, if you want to get away with not paying uh, the tax on it, you could. I don't advocate that in any way, shape or form. So please don't read between the lines as to what my opinion is. My books are very clean. Oh, they were when I was trading full time. They had to be. But if you were to go down that route, it's not a problem. The second pro of owning physical is you can treat it like a saving account that you can't cash out. So it's semi-liquid. And you, think, you may be thinking, well, I want it to be liquid. You do and you don't. So I've met a lot of people who, they're not very good at saving. They, they're really not. They would rather buy it in something that takes effort. There's a barrier to sell because they know they will spend it on something else, whether they be compulsive, whether that be shopping or gambling or drinking, etc., etc. It's a way of blocking them from acting out on bad trait habits that they have. And that's okay. You know, we've all got our crosses to bear and I'm not, I'm certainly not judging anyone. Another pro of the physical market is if, if you don't own it, is it yours? Now this argument stems back from uh, when the states tried to confiscate gold and silver. I think one person was prosecuted to make an example of them. And the idea is that the government can come and, and take your assets if it's in paper form. And that's fundamentally wrong, but it, there's, there is precedent for it. So, for example, if you look at the recent banking crisis of the last decade, they did, they did it in, I believe, Malta. They've also got negative interest rates, which is pretty much theft. You know, these things are all interconnected. And also, another pro of owning physical is that a paper contract is going to cost you for owning it. It's going to cost you when you buy it, which you can pick up physical for under spot, by the way. And it's going to cost you to keep it open, depending on the type of paper contract that you have. So there are less costs involved You literally buy it, and then once you've bought it, that's the spread. You've paid the spread, and that's it. There shouldn't be another cost involved. It's simply you will lose money selling in certain areas, such as selling to a dealer or selling to a pawnbroker, etc. You need to have your exit planned correctly. Now, what are the cons of, of owning metal? You can get robbed. I was literally talking to a gentleman earlier who told me he was robbed. Uh, I've heard many a hor horror story. Oh, stolen. Probably the better term. I've heard many a horror story where people have have things stolen. I'll be completely upfront and honest with you. My, I, I won't say which relation he is to me. Some of you know, but a family member of mine actually pawned some of my coins when I went away. Um, I did get them back, but this can always happen. It's always a risk. I put everything under lock and key except for a few proof coins. 
and lo and behold, when I come back, they were gone. I had to wait three months to get them back. It didn't cause me stress. It did annoy the hell out of me. But it could cause other people stress. It could have been that he took more than I had uh, left in the open. That would have caused me stress because that would have been a big issue. Most of my stuff was in, in lockups or in paid storage anyway, but I, I keep a few things on, on my person. It's not it's not much because I've had to dwindle it down due to what happened. And also, I don't want to get robbed and I start a new business, of course. What is another con? It's the high highest buying price than if you are on the paper market. Now, I can actually, the reason it's a higher buying price is because this has got to be taken out of the ground, it's got to be minted, you've got to pay wages, it's got to be put into a coin, minted, uh, stamped. All these things have got to go into it before it goes to the person who buys it as an investment on the first hand market. On the secondary market, it plays by different rules and I will make another video on that. It's, it's not the same. But for you to buy this, you have to pay a spread and it's a lot higher. I think I got quoted fourteen pounds and sixty pence to buy from one of the cheapest uh, dealers in Europe. Well, that's two pound above spot, and you think, well, that's, that's not too bad. But then you look at it in terms of per percentage terms, you're talking what a sixth. That's high. That's that's pretty high in terms of percentage terms. So you've either got to wait for spot price to go up, or you've got to be really savvy in where you sell. Most people won't be the latter. Most people are not in a situation to really break the market down due to time constraints, whether they got a family or they're working hard or some people just don't understand it and that's okay. And one of the reasons I started this channel was to break down some of the complexities so more and more people could understand it so they could benefit from their individual investments. Now, another con of physical. You can lose it, you know. The amount of times I've dropped coins, gold coins, and I haven't been able to find them for months on end. It's it's it sounds funny. It's not. It's not when I owe it to a customer. It's not a good thing. I think losing it is more tedious than it being a con. It's it's it is what it is. I probably should take better care of of handling my coins. Um, in terms of where I put them but I'm like I said prior like I have a messy desk and I don't help myself that's how my mind works I guess let's think of some more cons now another con of owning physical is depending on how the market is going you could own the wrong type of physical so if you split that into bullion semi numi and you also split it into numismatic. There's going to be different times in the market when different things work. So sometimes the market only wants bullion. You know they're not interested in this. So this the prices of these the prices of these tend to go. They're kind of cyclical. They go up and down depending on what's flavor of the month. The prices of these can really get hammered if it's not in the correct market. Now. The sorry, I just received a message. the The problem with numismatic coins is that if you're at the top of the market, the top of the market tends to always appreciate. That's not a fact. That's that's anecdotal from what I've seen, but logically it makes sense because there's only there's only so many top top specimens of coins. These will always be desirable. If you, you're in, say, the middle of the numismatic market, so say, for example, these are probably worth about, well, it depends where you sell them, you know. These are the top-end coins of the bottom of the numismatic market. They're still collectible coins. They're in very good condition. They're probably anywhere between £5. No, no, that's a lie. I've, I've sold them for less. Probably £4.50 to about £10, depending on where you're selling them. you know. But then it becomes a simple economics class in the sense that 
the lower your price hit, the quicker you sell. So it depends how many you have. If you've got one or two and you want to sell them for 10 quid each, then fine. You know, if you've got 200 of them, you're not going to sell them at 10 quid each. You know, I I tend to I tended to price keenly when I was selling full time because it moved stock and it, I could always source more stock. I was good at sourcing stock. Some people were not in that position. But these coins will suffer in a stodgy market. If people are only after bullion and not interested in numismatic and you're a broad seller, so you've got a bit of everything, such as myself, then you will have problems. If you're purely selling numismatic and you've got the you've got the uh, I can't think of the word. You you've got the web around you, so you you've got the net the network. If you've got the correct network, this won't be a problem. It's having a correct network and building it, and it takes a lot of time, and a lot of people won't have the patience for it, and that's a con because it's a barrier to an it's a barrier to entry for selling, or a barrier to exit actually. It's not a barrier to entry. Now, this video is dragging on a bit. So these are the pros and cons of the physical market. I will go on to the pros and cons of the paper market on the next video. I think it is important and I really hope that I've helped you to understand the markets slightly better. And if you, you're already switched on, you know stuff, then great, you know, because you're going to do well from your probably active investments. So take care, guys. Bye.